Hello, I'm Lindsay Arson jones and today I'm going to talk about board games. Almost every Roman site in Britain produces small discs of bone, stone, pottery, glass, shale or wood, which we use for playing board games. The three principal types of bone counter are a plain disc with one dished or countersunk face, a disc with concentric rings on one face, and the earliest, a disc with both places plain. Sometimes these have letters or numerals scratched on their reverses. The discovery of a single glass bun-shaped counter may indicate an inset from a brooch or necklace rather than a game, but the very fine sets of multicoloured glass counters from Wellin, Lankhills and Lullingstone indicate these were used for board games, often in sets of 24. The white counters can be decorated with red, blue and turquoise spots, whilst the red-brown ones can have blue, yellow-ringed turquoise and blue-ringed turquoise spots. Less obvious objects may have been used as gaming counters, such as small pebbles used on boards scratched on the ground, but more elegant and highly decorated pieces would have been used by the better off. At South Shields, decorated wedges of jet, as in this picture, are likely to have been intended for a board game. Some of these are slightly curved with a suspension ring carved at one end and may have been worn around the neck until required, in which case the game must have only needed one piece per player. Alternatively, they may have been worn as good luck symbols by keen gamesters, in the same way gamblers today wear dice or poker chips as cufflinks or tie pins. Several games which relied on the skillful movement of counters on a board are known. Duodecum Scripta was played on the same principles as backgammon, with two players moving 15 counters each in opposite directions around a board of 24 squares. The moves were controlled by throwing three dice, and the object was to move one's own counters to safe squares, whilst knocking off the opposition's isolated pieces. The first player to move their counters around the board won. The best known of the Roman board games is Ludus Latrunculorum, also known as Soldiers, which was a battle game requiring great skill. This game was very popular, and boards made of stone, pottery, wood and even marble have been found, with exotic boards in precious metals referred to in literature. The board scratched on rough stone slabs from sewing shields and other mile castles and turrets on Hadrian's Wall would have been drawn by the soldiers in an attempt to provide themselves with entertainment in their off-duty hours. And here we have part of a board from sewing shields and you can see the lines which have been scratched to form the board on which the counters were placed. Ludus Latrunculorum was exempt from the ban on gambling because the moves depended on the player's skill and foresight and it may well have been regarded as a spectator sport as well as a private battle. Dice were required to play a number of games and no doubt just throwing dice was regarded as a game in itself. As is still the practice today, the numbers on the opposing sides normally add up to seven and it may be that the cube found at Southwark in London which has incised letters on its faces matching the requisite numbers was used in such a game. This item was made from basalt with metal inlay and the lettering, but most dice were made from bone, wood or pottery. Some of the bone dice found at South Shields and Corbridge were loaded, suggesting that cheating was commonplace. Knuckle bones, stones and nuts were an alternative to formal dice, but were also used to play knuckles or fives, a game which involves throwing small items into the air and catching them on the back of the hand an activity which is still to be seen in playgrounds today. Nine Men's Morris is commonly regarded as a medieval game, but stone boards for Nine and Three Men's Morris have been found at Corbridge and other sites in Britain in Roman context, and this plan shows you what a Nine Men's Morris board would look like. Some of the objects which were used for Roman games are very clearly gaming counters. Some are not so obvious, and it's important if you find a collection of small pebbles or bones in a pattern to consider they may have come from a Roman board game.